Hi, my name is Tony Wright. I'm the founder and CEO of Wright IMC, a full service digital marketing firm in Dallas, Texas, or the Dallas, Texas area. And I, first of all, I wanna thank SEM Rush for giving me the chance to talk to you guys today about attribution modeling and attribution weighting. Okay, I'm gonna jump into the analytics here. Um, using utilizing Google's demo account. If you can go in here and play with any of these uh, tools uh, and learn them before you actually start uh, looking at how to do them on your own um, on your own website. But uh, just real quick, we're going to go in here. I want to uh, look. Uh, go. You go over to conversions. Go to multi-channel funnels. And looking at the overall conversions here, you can see. You know, you set your dates. I've got March fifth through eleventh. It's fine for our purposes. A total conversions, 3,006, and then the clicked assisted conversions. This just kind of gives me, okay, we've got, uh, how, are, is this really worth looking at attribution? Do we have enough assisted conversions to, to make the, the proverbial juice worth the squeeze? In this case, we definitely would. Um, that's pretty much all we need to look at for here. Uh, you can go in here and look at assisted conversions. This is a, a good tool. Basically, you can see the assisted conversions. Um, for each channel, or you can do whatever you want to there. Uh, and uh, basically, assisted conversions tells you, you know, okay, an assisted conversion means that at some point of the funnel, this this channel was an assist, not the actual last direct. You can see that in this report too. Obviously, customize this. I'm, I'm assuming you, you know Google Analytics pretty well. Um, but you can this assisted conversion value. This is something that really quick, important to understand. This is not a weighted value. This is the, the value of the overall assist. So there's 731 assist conversions with a total value of $200.48. I don't know what they're selling. Obviously something pretty cheap, but that's the overall um, assisted value. Uh, so the overall conversions, not just um, a, a weighted assist. But let's go here at attribution. This is where we can start talking a little bit more fun. Click on the model attribution tool. I had to click it twice there. Sometimes that happens. And you'll see here we've got up here we've got the you know it's a pretty standard report. Um, this is the last interaction, uh, basically you know last click. Last we talked about these models earlier. And you'll see if you click down here, every single one of those models we talked about is here. So you can go and I can look at the last interaction. Okay, I've got this this last interaction. And then I just want to see, okay, let's look at this from a linear perspective. And remember, linear is when the credits, uh, it starts giving uh, each touch point um, the same weighting. So I'm doing this uh, la uh, last interaction versus linear. Now I can go down here and look at my look at this and see, okay, wait, I've got organic search. Okay, we had eight, 858 conversions that were attributed to that last interaction. But wait a minute, oh, I've got 958. When I start looking at linear, um, that, it, that gives me a, a, a really good case that organic search is working pretty well on this account. I use this a lot uh, for you SEOs, just a tip to show your value a little bit better. Utilizing some of these tools is really a great way to understand that. So for instance, I'm gonna go and put in just uh, my, my first interaction, which is another one of my favorite uh, deals versus the linear. And as I can see this, gosh, we've got organic search topping out the charts. Um, and we look at the first, the, definitely you can see that organic search is extremely valuable in this account um, for first interaction, for getting people uh, introdu introduced to the brand. When do you need to do custom weighted attributions? Well, uh, Typically, the first thing I encourage anyone to do is uh, make sure you understand, and you'll see why, but you understand the models that Google provides in regular analytics. Now, if you have um, Google Analytics 360, if you're lucky enough to uh, have access to that, uh, get your reps, if you're paying enough for that thing, get your reps to, to train you and, and look at, uh, they have some AI assisted learning attribution models uh, that are based upon, uh, it's based upon what's called the shapely value. If you want to really, really geek out, uh, go, it's a, it's a gaming theory. And it's pretty cool where it's, it's assigning weights 
to basically every, it, it's creating entities. Um, I just go type in shapely value and the Wikipedia will come up and you can read it. And it has actually the formulas that, that shapely value is using. But uh, most of the custom, most of the custom uh, weighted stuff that, that we do is really more, it, it's more rules based, what we call it, as opposed to AI based. And, and that is probably, you know, obviously AI based can be very valuable if you have the money and the budget, but you don't have to have that to, to do some really cool rules based stuff. And everything that we do in analytics is going to be based upon uh, the, the models that Google gives us, and we're going to customize each of those models. So it's important to understand the models that Google gives you. Uh, you know, all of those ones that we discussed earlier in the video, that's why I went through them, because you can't really do custom unless you understand what the models that Google's giving you are. Why would you do custom? Well, uh, there's a lot of times your business is different than someone else's. Uh, you, the model as it is may not work for you and to get the data that you're looking for. For example, uh, if you have a very, very robust email marketing campaign and and your goal is to you know, do drip marketing and marketing automation. Well, one of the things you really need to be doing is tracking that, but tracking that in comparison to the other channels. But if the goal is to create long-term customers there, you, and, and you're looking at the lifetime value of a customer, you definitely need to put a higher weight on those customers that are coming in from that opt-in email list when you're tagging them. So. You can do that in custom attribution. Of course, you can compare that to other things, but if you were running, say for instance, just a linear, uh, a linear model on uh, an email marketing campaign, you're probably gonna end up with weighting some of the other channels a little bit too highly, because especially when you start getting into talking about lifetime value. And that's just one of a hundred examples I can think of of why you would wanna do custom attribution weighting. So without further ado, let's get into how to do that in Google Analytics. Okay, first off, you can kind of see them over here in attribution model comparison tool. Uh, that's uh, where you want to be in for the most part when you're doing this. You can come down here. I when I click on this, uh, these all these models, you can see I've got these different, uh, you know, the different models that we just talked about, and then you see custom models. Well, I can go to here to create a new custom model, but you know, before you do that. A lot of people have already created some pretty cool custom models. So I can go here and, and, and do this import model from gallery, and you can see there's a ton of these in here, and I can look at based upon most popular, latest, highest, highest ratings, uh, you know, uh, filter by the rankings. So I only want to get, say I want to get the five star. Uh, contact form submission is one that is going to uh, talk about uh, uh, you know, if you have contact forms and lead forms, and I'm not going to go through these, but you can see, you know, um, Avinash has got some great ones in here. Uh, there's a lot. Of, I would highly recommend spending some time exploring this, but we're not going to do that right now. Now let's create our own custom model if we were going to do that. Okay, I can name my model. I'm just going to name it test one, but I've got to look at the baseline. I've got to create a baseline model, what I'm comparing it to. This is why it's important to understand those uh, all those models that we talked about so and the easiest one when you're creating a custom model to, to you know start out with is definitely the linear now we can go in here this is the look back window i can put this on but the look back window is how many days past do you want to track so for instance on this it's set for 90 days and that's 90 days is how far you can go but say you're only interested you started running a campaign in the last 30 days you can set that to whatever day you want. You kind of get the picture there uh, for how many can, you know, how long are we looking back from a customer? So if a customer came a year ago, it's gonna be pretty hard to, to judge anything in attribution the way that works today. But you can go back 90 days pretty much uh, to set that to see how well they interacted. Uh, and then here, adjust credit for impressions. Basically, you can read these, specify the relationship between the general impression weighting and relative time weighting. Am I interested in doing that? Okay, if I do that, Basically, I'm going to I'm going to look at cre uh, crediting all impressions one one or however many times the other interactions in the conversion uh, in the conversion uh, path. So, but I I can even get a little bit further if I click on that advanced tab uh, and and kind of if this if then type statements when an impression uh, proceeds a visit by however many minutes 
or credit. I can so say for instance, uh, you know, we're we've got our uh, our email marketing campaign that we're we sent out. We know when exactly when that happened. When they you know did they convert on that? I want to give that email marketing campaign if it converted say five minutes after it came in. I want to give that one. Uh, X times more credit than the other one. So I can, I can play with that and we could do that, you know, 1.1, whatever I want to do that, that number to, let's say, let's give it uh, two times the, uh, the number. That's probably a pretty good number. I mean, these numbers, you need to play with this and understand how it affects what your weighting is because you, you can't really understand that unless you, you know, test it out. So then we can next adjust the credit based on user engagement. Basically, these are this is the rules based rules based stuff I was talking about earlier. Um, I can distribute the credit across. Remember, linear distributes the credit across evenly for each interaction touch point. So I can distribute them based upon time on site or page depth. I mean, what is page depth? Page depth is how how many pages that, that they view. So let's let's run that page page depth. Now I'm Typically, when I'm putting this together, I'm not going to put all these variables in on one custom. I, I don't like doing that. I don't recommend you do it either. Um, it gives you too many variables. And honestly, uh, when we have too much data, we have no data. So it, I, I like to kind of test these one at a time, but I'm going to go ahead and, and show you kind of what each one of these does. Applying a cust custom credit rules. And I, so I can include things like, say for instance, that uh, if, if, if it went through the path of, and you can see, you know, these are your standard Google Analytics items, but let's stick with the position in a path. I can do display URL, destination URL. So if I, you know, want to give credit to a page that is, you know, my destination URL or any of these items, I can, I can give more weight to whatever I want. There's just, the possibilities are endless. I mean, are, you know, millions and millions of permutations of, and, and possibilities of comparison. Um, but let's keep with position or path, and you can add an or statement if you want, um, and, and you can say it exactly matching any of these things, you know, and, and I want to include that position or path, it, it includes, it, I'm just going to leave it as any. Um, and I can also add an and statement if I want, and add another dimension. And if that case, then I'm going to credit it, just like we did above, you know, 1, 1 1.5, you know, one, or sorry, 1.1, you know, it goes up by increments of of a tenth and you can uh, set that to whatever you want to do and then of course you can apply another custom metric but you can see you can apply as many as you want on this and it really is a very very powerful tool let's save and apply I've got my custom metric now and you can see where is that custom metric it's my test one I got it right here so I can see my test conversions how it changed things, and then I can even compare those against others. I can do my own custom met my own custom weighted metrics, um, and uh, create you know test two, test three, or whatever I want to, and, and compare those across the board. Um, remember, uh, there is that custom gallery where a lot of stuff has already been created and tested, and, and look at the ones that are high, highly starred. That is definitely um, a way to go that can save you a lot of time and a lot of headache so anyways that's how you create these custom weighted metrics there's a lot of things you can do within Google Analytics to really customize your data understanding uh, attribution of your specific campaigns um, I recommend I mean everyone has access to the Google demo analytics account go play with this stuff uh, there's no harm no foul and when you're playing in the demo account you can't really mess anything up if you like what you said or disagree with anything I said, love to talk about it. Um, contact me on Twitter or um, any of the other channels that I'm out there on. Thank you so much for watching everything. And again, thanks to SEM Rush for allowing me to put this together for you.